Hi guys, this is a, um, a video uh, specifically aimed at the last section of uh, Unit 4 uh, where we're looking at uh, acceleration of a project and I'm going to go through um, the um, steps of when calculating um, the acceleration. Um, so, okay, so first thing first is the contractor has certain reasons why he would want to accelerate uh, and um, basically he just wants to make more money and get a better cash flow by getting off the site quicker uh, so he would like to lessen his liquid uh, damages okay then the client might have other reasons which uh, is he might want to open a, uh, a store quicker get a benefit of winter sales or whatever uh, his reasons might be um, so the concept that we're going to look at is simple. We're going to look at normal time and we're going to have look at normal cost in contrast to crash time and crash cost. Okay, so uh, firstly we're just going to define these uh, these concepts. Is your cost slope is the critical path compressed as densely as possible? Okay, that's your cost slope. And then basically you can um, calculate your cost slope by um, having your increase in cost over your reduction in time or you can have your crash cost less your normal time which gives you your increased cost uh, or you can have normal time less crash time to give you your reduction in time okay so basically if the project uh, had a normal um, project time of or cost of eighteen thousand pounds and um, or uh, sorry as of eight, uh, ten thousand uh, pounds and uh, if you accelerate it you have eighteen thousand um, which is the cost so you your cost slope is then eight thousand divided by the difference in time that you made up so your normal time is eight days uh, uh, sorry um, twelve days and then your accelerated time is your eight days to give you four days and simply you divide your difference or in cost uh, in your over your difference of days to get your cost slope okay fairly easy um standard um all of this is um within your uh, textbooks um let me just get that page okay it starts on page 186 okay so just um, explaining it a little bit better is you've got your normal time normal cost is you consider a network arrow for the activity of electrical services for instance your electrical services would have taken 12 days under normal circumstances and in all con uh, or here it's just repeated um, so that's your normal time crash time is by increasing the resources it would cost 18,000 pounds direct costs are increased thus okay so your cost slope is basically your increase in cost over your reduction in time or your normal cost and your normal time over or your crash time less your normal cost over your normal time less your crash time which gives you 18,000 minus 10, 12 minus 8 gives you cost slope of 2,000 pounds or rands if you want to. Okay, so that's basically just a repetition of what we did in the first slide. Okay, so uh, then we look at our direct costs. You've got our labor, e.g., bonuses, uh, more labor is needed. Uh, if you accelerate it, you plant, you need to increase your plant material, more uh, waste is produced, uh, subcontractors, direct and indirect factors for them, overheads and more admin, etc. Okay, so these are items that contribute to your uh, costs. So your indirect cost is your normal P's and G's, for instance, project supervision, um, site hutting and accommodation, site office, telephones, heating, etc., buckies, transport, and so forth. Okay, then other definitions is your total project cost. It's the direct and indirect costs combined. Op 
optimum project durations is where the um, most beneficial least cost situation occurs taking into account both direct and indirect costs okay so we're going to look at your total cost and your um, project duration by means of a um, example okay so just before we go into the example basically we've got our um, total costs and our direct costs here so and then we've got our indirect costs so basically you've got your indirect costs and your direct costs uh, then if you add that item and that item you get that item on your total cost same with here in you can see what the difference is your indirect cost has a um, as a constant slope that's like your um, P's and G's your daily or your monthly costs your direct cost is your more plant like we highlighted earlier which escalates uh, if you reduce um, the um, the time needed okay so that is basically the concept so we're going to look at at that now and then uh, try and plot this on a graph okay yeah okay so that's just the explanation of where it goes to and then this is what we're going to aim to calculate is our optimum time Okay, so getting into um, our um, example, so if we look at, at two scenarios, figure 9.40 uh, shows a construction sequence involving activity A to I in arrow diagram format. The tubular data indi indicate the normal times, normal costs, crash times, crash costs, and the indirect costs of the project, which amounts to... 2,000 pounds per week. Okay, so this is the 2,000 pounds per week. So on page uh, 189, you can start reading. That's basically what I'm referring to. So and then on page 119, you will see uh, this diagram. Okay. So in figure um, 9.0 uh, 41 the um, analyzed diagram based on the normal time situation uh, which gives an overall project duration of 28 weeks okay so basically what they went to calculate is they um, just plotted um, the normal times to see what the actual normal time of this project is um, because they um, you can't just add all of your days together because they have different sequences like a uh, take six so they just added six year B as a duration of, of eight sorry guys this is not freehand uh, and then E has a duration of six uh, and so forth and then they calculate your critical path I think on the next page we will be able to see that much better but please have a look uh, on this table in this diagram at your normal costs this is information that's provided is total cost okay excluding the 2000 um, per per week and then your crash time for these items is given here and then you crash cost next to that okay so to increase or um, to decrease item a to four days it will cost you 20,000 um pounds extra to do the work same with b it will cost you um f to reduce it with four weeks it will cost you 48 pounds um, extra for reduction uh, reducing the time okay so okay uh, this the point that i wanted to make with this is just you can't just add all of this together Okay, because you're not going to get to the right answer. Okay, so just looking at this table, uh, figure um, 9.41, the analyzed arrow diagram based on a normal time situation, which gives an overall project duration of 28 weeks. The total uh, project cost based on normal time has been calculated at 254,000 uh, pounds. Basically, it is your um, 
28 day weeks times 2000 and that's added to your 98 uh, direct costs which gives you a final uh, or total cost of 254,000 okay very um, simple to uh, to do is um, what they did is they just put in the time durations and then they had a look at what the longest path is to see what the uh, duration of the actual project is so simple way of doing that is starting from the back I'm gonna mark that in in green is and going backwards so and looking for the longest path okay so first item is D that is on a critical path that's uh, six days then from here we can see that F is our next longest item which is D um, or given at 10 uh, days then working from there it's six and then from there on it's a which is our other day so it's um, six plus six is 12 plus 10 is 22 plus six is 28 days which they calculated there okay so this is um, basic stuff that you did in PQM last year and also doing in project management this year um, so please have a look at that then just go, okay here's this critical path that i just drew in okay cool okay so now you've um, established what the critical path is and now you need to rate uh, your items um, in in order what your according to your cost slope so now you you put in your um, items in uh, in a table like this and you have your normal time listed here your crash time your saving in time and then you've got your normal costs uh, your crash cost increasing um, increase in cost and then you cost slope here and then you rank your your items from the <clears throat> Uh, downward. So what they've done is they've um, put the critical path here, the items, and then they rank the critical path items accordingly. So um, A, E, F, and D are basically listed there, and then they rank them according to to the cost slope. Okay. So D is your least. Uh, um, D has the least impact on. Um, on your or has the lowest um, cost slope uh, with A having the second lowest and then E the third lowest and then F the fourth okay so basically yeah, um, it doesn't necessarily work like this I don't know why they ranked it like this particularly um, but if you go to your um, Oh, basically they just worked from uh, according to your um, diagram 9.41 they just drew in the critical path so this is the critical path that they just drew in uh, going on here okay so uh, these items uh, do not apply because they're not on the critical path okay so once you've um, done that and you've calculated which one uh, has um, or the ranking accordingly and then you also added or calculated the amount of time uh, you save for each item uh, then you go to the next step okay okay please guys and this is also uh, explained very uh, very well in your textbook so uh, please read through that so scenario one is a reduction of five weeks in the project duration in order to complete the project by week 23 the effect on the direct and indirect cost will be considered in order to achieve this reduction so you're giving the scenario that you need to um, <clears throat> reduce your time uh, duration with five weeks okay so what happens is okay so we've got that now you can establish okay what items do i need to reduce this um this project with five weeks so we can see immediately a um e and f will apply and we're saving two weeks two weeks okay and then we're saving four but we only need 
one of these to get you our um, required five weeks okay so keep that in the back of your mind and I think on the next table it actually explains it very well okay so figure uh, 9.45 the summation of the direct and indirect costs is displayed and the point of graph where the cost uh, suddenly increases in the position to the optimum time at least cost situation this occurs at the end of week 24 okay so let's first look at um, we of um, okay let's look at table 9.2 sorry for um, for that I just want to get that correct okay here we go okay so your scenario is what I basically sketched is we're going to look at items D A and E normal times is six weeks our crash time is four weeks and five weeks um, but the reduction in time that we need is two weeks two weeks one week like I highlighted in the previous one so the cost slope um, is three thousand four thousand and nine thousand okay so for the number of weeks that we're re reducing is uh, two times three thousand is twenty uh, is six thousand and two times four gives us eight thousand and one times nine thousand gives us nine thousand so reduction in overall time we've so we've decreased our project with five weeks and it had an additional cost of twenty three thousand uh, pounds okay so just doing that calculation you've got your direct cost is thus 118 uh, 98,000 plus 23 to give you a new indirect cost or um, direct cost sorry and then your indirect cost is now instead of 28 it's now 23 times 2,000 which is now 46,000 and then it is those two together so now we've got a cost of 296 which is actually a bit lower than our um, initial or slightly higher than our initial 254,000 uh, pounds so there was acceleration cost of 13,000 pounds okay so this is a question where I might ask um, uh, calculate what the cost implication would be to reduce your project duration by five weeks okay so then you will use these tables uh, tables uh, 9.2 and 9.3 okay going to scenario two uh, now we're going to look at uh, the optimum time reduction so um, now we're going to look at the effect of the project cost for each week's reduction in time in order to assess the least cost situation. So the change in the direct and indirect cost due to each week reduction in the project time is indicated in 9.44. Uh, the relationship is presented in graphical form in 9.45. Okay, now that's what I read um, earlier. So the relationship between the indirect and direct cost for each week of the project from um, uh, weeks 28 to uh, 18 can be observed in figure 9.45, which basically um, shows that the summation of the direct and indirect cost is displayed and the, and the point on the graph where the cost suddenly increases is the position of the optimum, optimum time and least cost situation. This occurs at the end of week 24. At week 25, the change in cost per week alters from 2,000 to 7,000 per week. Okay, then the uh, project costs have been analyzed back to week 18 in order to um, uh, see the overall cost implication. So basically, we're going to look at. Okay, so basically, this is just a summation of the previous uh, scenario one. So we um, looked at D, E, and A. So, okay, um, we've already dealt with that. Skipping to scenario two, to find the least costly amount. So, this is what I've read now in um, two slides ago. 
the time at which the aggregate cost escalates substantially. Okay, so that's just the summation of it. Okay, <clears throat> so what we've got is we've got our normal direct costs and our indirect costs, which has our total cost uh, at 254,000. Okay, so now let's say we reduce our project with 27 uh, or worth one week. Um, it will add 3,000 um, pounds of direct costs um, to our project and it will re remove 2,000 uh, indirect costs uh, from our um, from our project. So uh, aggregate cost is added of 1,000 pounds. So our project to decrease our project with one week is it will add 1,000 pounds. Okay. So then we do the same, um, reducing it with one week, we add 3,000 and we subtract 2,000. So aggregate of 1,000 is added and uh, to, we, we are at 256,000. Okay, that's for activity D. Okay, then we do look at activity A. Um, which is if we reduce it with one week uh, here we add two thousand or oh, four thousand pounds and we subtract two thousand uh, for our um, indirect costs and then we've got an aggregate of two and two hundred fifty thousand okay so you can see it's um, fairly straightforward G, A, E, and F. Okay, cool. So you can see the ranking. I just wanted to make sure that this is right. So uh, the rankings in in the critical path items are still according to table 9.42. So table 9.42, you still need to uh, use to actually rank your items according to that. The ones that has the least impact. Okay, and then we look at um, item 20, or uh, still with item A, uh, we reduce it with another week, and we still add an aggregate of two. Then we do the same, and here we can see here's a substantial increase, jumps to 7,000, and here it goes to 8,000. Okay, and then it wasn't taken any further than that. Okay, so that is now figure 9.5. So all that we do now is we plot this on a graph. So our direct or indirect cost is very easy. We've got our normal um, cost is 55,000 uh, and we reduce it with to, um, was it 56, sorry, 56,000. We reduce it with 2,000 each week that we reduce our project duration with. Okay, very straightforward. And then um, our increase of items, our direct costs is as per the previous table. You just plotted, so our initial one is um, 196. Reducing it with one week, uh, we get to 201,000, um, 204,000, 206, and so forth. And then we can see uh, here it starts to jump from two, uh, 212,000 to 221,000. Okay, and then um, going up, just uh, adding this one to that one, we can see that um, we've got a big, uh, the slight jump here, and then here's that 7,000 uh, jump that we highlighted in the previous table, which means that our optimum line of uh, time least cost is at week 24. Okay, so the main thing about this exercise is to go through um, through this example, work through it systematically, and um, just do the same whenever you ask a, um, a question in the exam or in the test and uh, to just refer to this and just apply uh, this rationale. So let me just show this is where the major jump is. 
and that's the optimum um, timeline. So, uh, yeah, so please have a look um, at this. And if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you, guys. Bye.